Okay, so part three of upgrading my RX-8 to 160 kilowatts is well underway. So we have motor inverter in, which you would have seen from part two. I have lifted the whole lot right up as pretty much as high as it would go, undone my motor mounts, uh, or sorry, undone the motor mounts, lifted it up as high as it would go, uh, bolted it back on, and when it settled back down, that measurement I showed in part two is now about 61, 62 mil. So I'm just inside the tolerance uh, by a few millimeters, which is perfect. Um, I've just really started to attach a few things. My um, vacuum pump here, I've bolted that back to the motor. Obviously it's the same motor effectively, there's things in the same place. My little bracket that I made here that the pump water pump is gonna slot into, I've put that back on. Um, I'm not going to slot that back in just yet because I'm going to have to do a whole lot of bleeding again, which is painful. Not looking forward to that. I've redone my BMS wiring, just attached it to the side of the motor here and the top of the inverter here. Um, done that because this is probably the most fragile cable. It's not fragile, but the most pain in the ass to replace. You know, in here there are, God, I can't remember now, is there 96 wires, 48 wires? I can't remember how many wires, but I had to make that by hand. Um, to extend it because the BMS is in the boot. Um, so yeah, very fragile, not fragile, just don't want to damage it. Um, so that's good. I've my 3D printed cover for the DC connectors fits because it's all the same. That's good, that's nice and snug. I put that on there, just a bit of a dust cover really um, for the moment. Um, not gonna put the high voltage on just yet because the next job to do is the wiring loom. So I've got the uh, new wiring loom here. There we go, all there, and I need to basically cut off all the black coverings of it because I've got the new connector, which I need. That's the connector for the Nissan Leaf uh, ECU, which I don't need. I've um, got the connector then for the temperature sensor on the new inverter, which I do need. And then there's things like, uh, that's the resolver offset for the motor, which I do need. Um, I think that's the air conditioning, maybe? No idea what that is and a whole of the wires that are cut off. So basically there's a whole load of stuff in this loom I just don't need at all. Um, so I'm gonna undo it, get rid of everything I don't need, and then up here I've got my old wiring loom, which there's the connector to the old inverter, and it's really only these probably, what, four or five wires here that I'll need to spline in, and, and the two black ones obviously, for power and uh, ground because the rest will be part of that loom already, the old, the new loom already. Um, so yeah, it would just be these, these wires here. Actually, I'll, I'll cut these here, spline them onto the new, onto the new fitting. Um, all this lot I won't need, because this is the connector for the old motor. So I just don't need any of that. Um, yeah, I don't think it'd be that complicated. Because um, watching Darla when he does his, he has to spline every single wire because he was just in place replacing the inverter. Um, but of course I've replaced the motor and the inverter, um, I just need to get power to it. Uh, the rest will just connect up. Fingers crossed. Anyway, as I've said many, many, many times, things never go quite as planned. So, things never go quite as planned. Um, yeah, I'm gonna crack on, so catch you later. So I've attacked that cable well. Lots of bits down here, so that's lots of the black shrouding. Gotta be a bit careful with the Stanley knife when you're cutting stuff, you don't hack wire that you need. Um, I'll come back to that in a minute because I have hacked a wire. Uh, back here then, I've got uh, a connector that's connected to the new inverter, it's the new connector. The resolver wire is going to the motor connector, I've just not plugged that in yet. Down here I've got the new wiring for the temperature sensor, that's good. Then I've got CAN bus, uh, two green cables here, dark ones are 12 volts, black is ground, and this light one is, I think that's permanent 12 volts, I can't remember which way around it is, one, two of these are ignition 12, um, and one's permanent, and then I've got this erroneous grey cable that I never knew what it was on the old one, and I still don't know what it does, so I'll just bundle it up and leave it there in case I ever need it. So that's good, exactly the same cabling. Um, I have done a bit of a cock up though. When I've taken the shrouding off, it said be really careful. Look what I've done, look what I've done, I've hacked this cable. So this wiring is slightly different to the old um, resolver wiring in that before I had eight wires, uh, now I seem to have five wires, but each of these um, thicker ones has two wires inside it so that I can see there are still 
eight wires there and eight wires on this connector. Uh, but I've hacked it and I have actually gone through one of the cables and really annoyed myself. Um, yeah, so that's a shame. I need to um, patch that up before I go any further. And also, this connector's broken. So this should have a shroud on it like the old one here, like a black you know, plugging in thing. End is exactly the same. But shroud on it. Um, I'm missing the shroud. Now I'm pretty certain I didn't do that. I think if I review my footage, that black stuff, that black shroud is missing. So it's got, it, it, I'm hoping it's sealed because it's got this little rubber grommet thing here. I'm hoping when I plug it in, it's sealed and doesn't really need it. If it does, I'll probably have to just bodge something together to just stop it getting any, I mean, it's only water ingress, isn't it? I, just, I can't believe it needs that to stop water. I don't know, need to investigate that. But anyway, that's good. So what I've got then is my old wiring here and my new wiring here. I had to splice it together now, um, and I can get rid of the old wiring loom, and um, I can power it up. It's a bit scary, isn't it? It should just should just work. Um, haha, who knows? So I've got a friend has, has appeared upstairs, so I'm going to go say hello. And I might come down a bit later. What day is it? It's sun Saturday, isn't it? I've got football tomorrow. That's going to be good. I hope you're all watching that. And um, I think that I might get this running tomorrow. So uh, I'll sign off for now. Hello. So it's now Monday. Uh, I didn't do any work on the car yesterday because I forgot I was playing golf and then I got back and after having a couple of golf points at golf, I fell asleep watching the Grand Prix. Then I woke up from the Grand Prix and watched the football with some more drinks and then fell asleep again and then woke up and it was Monday. So I lost, so I lost, Monday, uh, lost Sunday completely. Anyway, so it's Monday and I've had a little good session. I didn't really have a lot more to do, but what have I done? I have now spliced my new wiring into the existing car wiring here, which is good. So it's not tidy yet. I've not strapped any of it up. I've plugged the cable into the resolver of the motor. Now that is missing the shroud. Now it's sealed, so it's not going to get any dirt or water in there, but the black shrouding is a clip, which stops it coming out. So I need to investigate how maybe just a bit of, I don't know, I don't really want to glue it, but maybe just a, a glue gun glue, because that glue will hold it, but I can actually get it off quite easily. Uh, the damaged cable wasn't as bad as I thought. I had just nicked one of the cables inside, um, but just, you know, firmly putting it together again. It was just a couple of strands. I can't see that causing me any problems whatsoever with it nicely strapped up. I will neaten all this wiring up um, once it's confirmed working, which, well, it is confirmed working because I've turned it on and the wheels span or the motor span. Um, but you're going to laugh at me straight away because what have I not done yet? Again, I've not done the plumbing. So what happened when I turned it on? <laughs> yeah, um, the pump kicked in and blasted out all the water that was left in the system all over the floor and the side of the car. Yeah, I'm brilliant. I astound myself sometimes. So I've just made a closed loop. I've just plugged, plugged, plugged the two ends of the cable in, uh, piping into each other so that any loose uh, impediments, any loose impediments, any water that's left in there will just circulate. So I can now, if I come in the car, da -da, got the car 12 volts powered back in. And if I turn the car on, do do do. I can grab the engine. Easy. So I'm not going to push that that far because I haven't got the cooling circuit in and we all know what happened last time I didn't have the cooling circuit in. So that's really good news. I'm going to plumb the cooling in now because the plumbing is slightly different. Uh, if you recall, oh, drop the camera. There's a pipe back there, which is flexible. I should be able to get that pipe all the way around to here, which is where the old one used to be plugged in. Uh, plug it in, plug in all the side pumps, uh, all the side pipes for the plumbing, fill it full of water, fill it full of some antifreeze to, you know, so it doesn't freeze in the winter, and bleed it. Ugh. Right, anyway, I'm gonna get on and I'll catch you in a minute. Well, I've done it. I've bled all the air out, and again, it's just a pain in the ass. Um, I don't know if you've seen lots of my other videos about bleeding air out of these kind of custom systems, but I just don't get it. I mean, the air, the air just seems to run downhill. So, got my pump there, got my header tank, and you'd think 
all the air would bubble up to the header tank. No, 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 no. It seems to go down and get trapped in my radiator. Um, so I have to bleed it out of there and then it, all of a sudden there'll be some air trapped in this hose here, which is just right next to the header tank. You think, well, why is the air just not going out? Um, so I reckon that's taken me, oh, well, I would say that's two hours, maybe, maybe more, to bleed the air out. So I don't know if you can hear it on the camera, but the motor is running. Um, there's a little bit of air. I can hear, I can hear kind of bubbles. You can hear it kind of just bubbles going through, but I think that all will then settle back in the radiator, oddly, and, uh, and there's a little bleed I can do on there. So that's cool. So next I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have a tidy. So the wiring, I need to just bind it up, get it all out of the way, make sure it's all not flapping about. There's one of the new cooling pipes is kind of rubbing against the bodywork. Don't like that, because that's just gonna over time probably break, cut, get a hole, whatever. So I just need a bit of modifications there, probably just some cable ties, to be honest, just to hold it out of the way. Um, yeah, and then I'm probably just gonna get some, almost like baby wipes or just some wipes and just give it all a clean because, fall over, because, um, just give it all a clean because uh, just when the coolants come out and all the work I've been doing, it is just very dirty. So I'm gonna just give it all a wipe down and uh, put it back on its haunches and give it a drive. The one thing I'm gonna change code-wise is, if you recall, I have this meter in here that I can display things on. So I normally have that displaying my battery level, just 100%. I'm gonna change that to be a maximum uh, amp being pulled. So the, the thing I've got is that at the moment, the fuse in this is 225 amps. Theoretically, the 80 kilowatt motor and inverter would only ever pull a maximum of 200 amps. I bet it never got anywhere near that, to be honest. Obviously doubling this, I've got a theoretical amperage of 400 amps. Now that's gonna blow the fuse. I don't think it's gonna get near 400 but it might get more than 225. So that display, I'm gonna make it stop at whatever the maximum limit was for uh, while you're driving along. I'm gonna keep the torque inputs to the inverter the same as the old one, so I should still just get 80 kilowatts. Uh, see what my max amperage is, and then just slowly increase it to the point whereby I might blow the fuse up. I am searching for a fuse. Um, struggling a little bit. So I found a couple of compatible fuses that I think would fit. Um, but at the moment, I'm just gonna see how far I can get with 225 um, amps and um, yeah, start doing some test drives. So it's Tuesday evening now um, and it's looking really good. I have had a bit of a clean up. Um, if I pan back a bit, Ooh, that's pretty sweet to me. 160 kilowatt unit, I like it. So I've had a bit of a wipe down, clean up, um, tidy cables, made it all just nice and neat and make sure that things aren't rubbing each other and that it's all going to be good. Um, so what I'm going to do now is, it's getting a bit late, so I'm probably going to edit the code so that it does the amperage thing I discussed a minute ago. And then I'm going to just upload this to YouTube, actually I'll do it as part three. I think then part four will probably be the final part of just starting to do some test drives with it, I guess. Um, Put the bonnet on, yeah, put the bonnet on and put the uh, put the front bumper back on as well. But I think before I do that, part four will be, I'm just gonna get it out, drive it around the road a little bit. And of course I need to tell my insurance company as well because I've doubled the power, so I should really tell them. But anyway, that's gonna be the end of this part and um, I'll catch you all later.